How do you get off of the inhalers? We, incre we usually use a steroid inhaler, so they don't need the beta agonist. But a lot of the new steroid inhalers, they mix a long-acting beta agonist with the steroids. So people are taking a, a um, beta agonist all the time. So we have to give them a new, a new prescription to have them take the steroid without the long-acting beta agonist. Now, when they're eating healthy, a lot of these studies show 14 days of eating healthy, they're already having less, they're already doing better right. and have less inflammation. Wow. But I get them eating healthy for about a month of really good healthy food and getting and measuring the nutrients climbing in their tissues, then getting them off the beta agonist so they can just be on the steroid alone. And if I have to, I'll increase the dose of the steroid to control them to make sure I don't need a beta, beta agonist. Mm -hmm. I may even use, you know, a, a higher strength puff or a frequent use of the puff if we need to. But the expectation is we're going to cut back the steroids as the body's concentration of nutrients increases and as we fix the omega-3 index. You know, they we're saying all these oils and animal fats inflame asthma because body fat and the fat on the surface of cells, when they have a low omega-3 index, your percentage of the anti-inflammatory fats are low. So while they're eating right, we're also giving them zinc and the omega-3 fatty acids. Even the we have the vegan type, right? The healthy, but it's not rancid. We give them the, so we're cutting back on the omega of the pro-inflammatory fats and giving them more anti-inflammatory fats. And this takes time. And then we're slowly able to wean off the steroids. Now, even though I said that the steroids are not as asthma promoting as the beta agon as the beta agonists are, they the long-term use of steroids can keep the lung so the body can't detoxify. It can't throw toxins out through the lung. In other words, asthma is toxins coming through the lung tissue. You know, headaches are toxins coming out of the brain and nasal runny noses, your body's producing mucus to wash away virus particles and and, and mm -hmm. irritants. And you know, the lungs um, can get inflamed because the body's trying to push noxious waste through the lungs for elimination. So the symptom of the asthma symptom is a right directed symptom where the body's trying to protect the integrity of the cell. And the asthma attack where you can't breathe is because there's too much inflammation trying to remove toxins from the cell. The word inflammation, to be read in a medical textbook, says the inflammatory response is intertwined with the process of repair. It serves to wall off, dilute, and remove the injurious agent and set into motion a series of events that tries to heal and reconstitute damaged tissue and purify tissues. So we're saying the asthma attack itself, which can kill a person, the cells don't know the person can't breathe and can't, it's just trying to push out waste. You know what I mean? So the steroids prevents the cells from cleaning themselves. So when you're on steroids, you're retaining more waste in your body. So now so you that's have- That's why you're saying it's absolutely detrimental. So you, you, instead of allowing the person to get healthy, we pr we've pr made the person to get more toxic. It's like doctors treating headaches. They suppress the headache with Escit, Wygain, Vancouver, Excedrin, Fluorinol, Fluoroset, Midrin. They give drugs to suppress detoxification. And you, now you, get, you turn an occasional headache into a chronic headache syndrome. Now we have an occasional asthma attack, lung reaction, and now a person has severe chronic asthma because we've suppressed these with drugs. So now we're trying to reverse the, it's going the other direction. I know you said this, but it's a lot to take in. So I just yeah. want to be clear. You're saying these medications actually make people worse by that mechanism you described. That's absolutely what it seemed like. It, turns, it takes a mild asthmatic and it turns them into a more chronic, severe asthmatic. It takes in a person who gets an occasional wheeze with a cold. And then you go to a doctor to get some medications to take care of that wheeze. And all of a sudden you're wheezing all the time now because you're on medications. Mm -hmm. So it turns so the doctor can be the facilitator to take a mild disease and turn it into a more severe disease with medications like they do with diabetes. They give a person with mild diabetes, they give them drugs to make the beta cells in the pancreas work harder. And now the person poops out their pancreas faster and they become more severely diabetic from the drugs. So you're just de getting dependent on drugs. Dependency on drugs instead of removing the cause, yeah. But so now, and now the steroids which you inhale to suppress the asthma can suppress adrenal function long term. And now, even in I, a lot of people who I've cured of their asthma and can breathe great, never have asthma attacks anymore. Some of these people have been chronically fatigued for three months, six months, twelve months after they're free of asthma and off their drugs because now I've taken. Now they don't need steroids anymore, and now the body isn't producing enough of its own steroids and they have adrenal insufficiencies as a result of chronic steroid use. So now they're, so I have this one guy who um, actually came to the retreat last year who got rid of his asthma. It took us about, I don't know, 
four to five months to slowly wean him off medications and to have him eat right. And he really had terrible asthma, couldn't go to work anymore. You know, was, got rid of his asthma completely. Wow. Except now, he's, he, the first month he was at the retreat, he was so wiped out he could hardly exercise. And he's a young, strong, you know, guy. Yeah. And then, of course, now he, it took him, it's really surprising. He now can do exercise and, and be good shape, but it took him so long to get his energy back from being on steroids for so long. So yeah. what do you do for that? You just wait it out and let your body heal and repair? Take it easy? The most important thing you do is let people know there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing to be concerned about. This is perfectly normal that you're more fatigued than usual. The healing, the healing yeah, takes the healing place. Process. You're off the steroids. Your adrenal glands will come back. You know, but it doesn't affect every. It doesn't affect most people. Right. But it, and it depends on how what dose of steroids they've been using them, how long they've been using them, and whether they used oral steroids as well. But what I'm saying right now is even just the inhaled steroids can cause long-term adrenal insufficiencies, which interferes with their health. So yes, we get people off their medications slowly, and if they even if they're coming off medications. After like a wean of three months off the medications, I got them really healthy. Their nutrient levels are higher. And now if they start to get a little bit of a wheeze because there's some residual toxins in their lung that have to come out, then I might put them on a few days of some fasting to help, re to help speed up the lung detox and it relaxes the tissues so you don't, get into, don't have to go back on uh, medications for the asthma. But I've been very successful over the last 35 years of doing this in safely having people to get free of asthma and get off the medications and not have attacks anymore and not wow. have to require medications anymore, which has been really exciting. Yeah. You know. In kids and adults, it sounds like. In kids and adults. I even had one person who, who had um who had very bad hay, seasonal hay fever, you know, pollen when the pollen came out. What is hay fever? I'm not that familiar. Oh, like oh, at the allergies. It's that, like allergies yeah, and your yeah. eyes tear and yeah. you breathe. That's can't the common breathe, allergy well. that I the think common of. Allergy, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we're saying that a lot of people get well from that when they eat this way. But I've seen it in some cases where they actually take the second year of allergies. Like the first year they were on the diet, they followed the diet for nine months, pollen came back, they, had it, they still had their allergies. The second year came around and the allergies are gone. Mm. So a lot of times it takes a long time to get well. And some cases of asthma have got to get well in a month, but some people take, you know, six, five, six, seven, eight months to get well. But, they, think but they get well. They get well when they do it. Yeah, and it's important to recognize you're not treating them with a temporary solution. You're treating them lifetime. So it's right. not like you can just, just cure your asthma and then go back to eating that unhealthy food. Yeah, the biggest obstacle, of course, is getting people to eat healthily. Mm -hmm. and because parents say, well, how do I get my kid to eat healthily?